We've still got one more left. Once again, I'm Liam Buchanan with Venture Cafe Miami. I'm super excited about this next talk. Um, anybody excited about the World Cup by show of hands? Awesome. I know, right? <laughs> so I'm really excited to bring up our next speaker who is going to talking about the new wave of digital media, specifically talking about the World Cup. So please join me in welcoming Peter Blacker, who is the Executive Vice President of Digital Media and Emerging Businesses at NBC Universal Telemundo Enterprises. Hey, hey, Peter, welcome, welcome, thanks. welcome. Thanks, thanks. Who are you rooting for? Um, well, with a crowd like this, I can't openly okay. admit who I'm okay. rooting for because there's about every nation <laughs> represented. Tell I'll tell you privately later. Um, <laughs> all right. Welcome, Peter. <laughs> great. Well, nice to see you all here. Great to see this event become bigger and, and more diverse each year. <clears throat> really exciting. We're going to talk about the opportunity, the challenge, the sleepless nights because now we're down to 51 days until we actually kick off the World Cup that uh, this World Cup provides for all of us. And I thought I'd give you a little bit of a sneak peek into some of the things we're doing, help you understand a little bit some of the challenges and the excitement of what's going on and what is going to be the most digital and most social World Cup ever. So when we won the opportunity to have the World Cup, we'd never had it before in our company. It belonged to other media companies and we were super excited. And then while the opportunity was really big and bold, we realized the incredible challenge it was gonna present itself with a time difference and the fact that so many of these games are gonna happen early, early in the morning, and at a time when essentially people would be mobile and on mobile devices, which is fine, except for our agreement with FIFA, the way that we've worked with FIFA in the past, was not contemplating social media that much. In fact, four years ago, the idea of putting some of these clips up on platforms such as YouTube were actually not allowed. So we had to figure out what can we do to make these games really accessible, to make them really interactive, to make them very fun, and to make transmitting these games in Spanish something that we could all get excited and, and put our arms around. So when I look at what we focused on at the very beginning, it was about language, and not just the language of Spanish or English, it's the language of what it means to watch a game, the language of what it means to root for your country. And so we set about trying to do an entire new focus, a new campaign that would let everybody know that soccer is something that's just spoken, it's felt, it's part of a lifestyle. And so I want to share with you all this video, which positions how we view soccer. As you can see by the tone of that and the way that we're trying to bring this whole event to life, it's, it's much bigger and much broader, I think, than any of the media companies in the past have done it. And we're realizing that we need to focus on getting into that real emotional touch point, connect the touch point with digital devices and with social media. So in order to do that, we took a step back and tried to understand what's the DNA of a sports fan, a real true Latino sports fan. We did a, a, a bit of research, some of which is very fun and I'll share with you, some of which you'll be like, of course that makes sense. But we wanted to get to the very core of what do you feel when you're rooting for your team. So some of the stuff that we encountered, and by the way, before I even get into all this, many of you may not know this, but soccer is actually the most millennial sport in this country. It's also the most multicultural sport. So it's a sport that's most perfectly situated for digital and social media. 77% um, said that being able to watch soccer is one of the biggest joys in their life. 62% would get in trouble at work or stay at home watching an important soccer match. 
68% would give up all the rest of the content they had just to watch soccer, and 52% would spend the day hanging out with their favorite teams. In fact, we work, we're working with one of our marketing partners to create a series of apps that go on your phone so you literally can fake doing work and be watching the soccer matches. It's really quite clever and creative. Of course, we will not be allowing that to happen inside our own company. Everyone has to be at work all the time. Um, I'm actually a little worried. I'm like, wait, and so in 51 days, we've been counting down, counting down. We're, clearly, our, my entire team, some of whom are here, and our entire company is just literally going to stop. We're going to get like, no work done at all. But at least we've been counting down to this for years, so I guess it's all worth it. So we then asked some other questions, which is, well, what about language? Because in this case, when we got the rights, we acquired the rights for the Spanish language in the US, realizing that that was going to be a way to connect both with our core audience, but also understanding that there's a number of folks in this country who do not speak any Spanish and just love to hear the famous goal, which on a Monday morning I can't do very well. Um, and Andres Cantor, who does it better than I, would probably kick me off the stage. But the reality of it is that we have a real opportunity here to bring these games to a different level and to do things a little differently. And when we dug a little deeper, we again wanted to know just how passionate are these fans. And this is probably my favorite slide of any research piece I've seen in a long time, which is we asked folks, what is more important for you? And as you can see, my country winning the World Cup is second only to holding my child for the first time. It's like, wow. And by the way, it's not our own study. We worked with Horowitz, and they did a, a very uh, lengthy study on all this, winning a new car in a raffle, celebrating an anniversary, even getting a promotion, clearly um, second to their country winning. So we looked and we said, all right, we know the passion's there. We know that we have an audience that, because of the time difference, is going to be spending a lot more time on digital and social media. So we went back to FIFA and we said, FIFA, we need to be able to do more things. We need to be able to take our rights and find interactive ways to sort of connect more with our audience. And they came back and allowed us an incre incremental amount of hours of content. Actually, now we're going to be streaming over 1,000 hours of content that were not in any of the previous World Cups. Because we know that for our audience, they need to be able to get additional action beyond just the games. So I want to share with you, this is a clip. Before I get into this, I want to share with you uh, uh, something else that's about the way that we're dealing with this social and digital opportunity. And it's about bringing an element that's very, very near and dear to NBC Universal's hearts, and that's storytelling in sports. For any of you that have seen the Olympics, you know that it's not just about a swimmer swimming really fast or runner running very fast. It's that backstory. It's understanding who was this athlete, how did they get there, why should we care about them? And we found when it came, comes to World Cup soccer, there wasn't enough of that storytelling. So we brought in our executive producer, Jim Bell, who's done many of the Olympics, and actually combined him with our Telemundo Deportes team, who've done many major sporting events. And we said, let's bring some of this storytelling onto those digital platforms. So that as you're watching something on your phone or watching something on a connected TV, you actually have a real story and a real reason to care. Now, this is a video I want to share with you of something we did that sort of hits right at that center of that storytelling that we'll be doing throughout the entire games. So I'm going to hit play again if this works. Si ganara Panamá, amigos, estaría fuera de Estados Unidos. Correcto, correcto. Y entra Matador Tejas en el segundo tiempo, hombre de mucha experiencia. Y una jugada que sale de Cooper al cabezazo de, de Matador y, y llega Román a cerrarla como la cerraba de niño. Para Román, 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 Román. Cuando hago el gol y todavía estoy celebrando con la gente, mi, mi, mi mente está en eh, que yo estoy celebrando por ir a repechaje. Y yo cargo a Román y le digo, Román, vamos al Mundial Directo. Y ahí explota, explota todo el mundo y bueno, eh, Este grupo se lo merece por todo el trabajo que hemos hecho. No tengo palabras para escribir este momento. Es el momento más importante en mi vida.
That level of storytelling is what we think is going to make these games even more powerful. And we've been partnering up with our agency folks at Republica and Jorge Placenti and his team to continue to bring some of these stories to life. <clears throat> so we also wanted to find a way to find a connective tissue between the Telemundo transmission of these games and connecting it back with what we learned with the Super Bowl and Pyeongchang and looking forward to the Women's World Cup. What was interesting was this year, we got to see on our NBC Universal platforms how sports works in a mobile and connected TV device environment. What was fascinating is we did three times the amount of streaming during the uh, Winter Olympics this year than we did the previous Olympics. Three times. The majority of it driven by connected TVs. Again, something that we can all study and analyze now, but at the time when we were making plans, we didn't know. So as we went about doing our plans for Russia this summer, we realized we needed incremental content for connected TV, dev connected TV devices. And as we look towards France, we're doing the same. And what we're trying to do is to become a, basically a brain of understanding all the different touch points that sports fans want to use on mobile, digital, and connected devices. We also realized that we can't do it alone. And one of the things I've always believed in my tenure here in, this, in my role within Telemundo and NBC Universal is <clears throat> partnerships are key. And we've always enjoyed a very strong series of partnerships in this World Cup. We're doubling down with YouTube, working on a number of different products that will help bring these games to life in different clip formats. We're working with our partners over at BuzzFeed, and we've developed a series, Somos o Mundial, which will be a multi-part series distributed across digital and social platforms. We're working with folks like Sports Mania, who are actually a startup here in Florida, and they've developed a phenomenal emoji sports keyboard that's really cool. If you haven't gotten it, please check it out. We're working with Gift Note and bringing musical clips with soccer in a whole new way for this World Cup. Partnerships with Vice, Musical.ly, Panini, I'm sure almost all of you have had a Panini book or know of a Panini, person that's had a Panini book. We've actually brought augmented reality into this, this year's version of the book, and very cool. And last but not least, our partnership with NBC Sports. As I mentioned before, we've learned so much by having done the World, uh, having done the Super Bowl and the Olympics this year, and now we're really happy to pull all those learnings into what we're doing uh, this summer. We have a very aggressive and impressive setup, and I want to give you a little sneak peek of what the view will be like from our offices starting in a few weeks. We're actually going over there <clears throat> earlier this uh, earlier uh, to get set up, but this will be the view if you were sitting there. What's interesting is this is our stage setup. Now you'd think this is a TV setup, but it's actually done for all platforms. So all of our content will be programmed out of this setup for digital, social, mobile, and television. And we're again trying to take this whole experience to a whole new level. So I opened up a little bit with the excitement and obviously the challenges of being in a world now that's so digital and so social. And I want to share with you what I think is probably the most interesting thing of all that we're doing. We're working with a company called Copa90. And the reason why we picked this company is that we felt that fandom, fandom in this country around soccer, hadn't reached the level that it could reach and probably will reach and is currently being enjoyed in Europe and in Latin America. And so we thought about how could we connect better with the sport? How can we shine a light on fans across the country to showcase why they're fans, why they love this sport, what the sport means to them, and actually bring them into our coverage? And this is not about us going out, taking existing social influencers, and be like, hey, will you work for us? We're actually creating an entire new group. <clears throat> so for the last several months, we went out across the country. We found candidates from 19 different states, and they range from all different ethnic backgrounds, and they are, at their core, Latino sports fans. They're men and women, which will be great because we have the Women's World Cup coming up next summer, and as we know, the U.S. is the reigning champ. We wanted to be able to continue that through. But most importantly, we wanted to find a way to zero in on fandom, to really understand what makes a person so incredibly driven to follow a team. Why do they spend so much of their time, energy, and money to travel all around the world? Why do they go and get dressed up in the same shirt every single time? Because they will not change it until their team wins. And so I want to close out this whole um, opportunity and share with you a little sneak peek of the 
approach we're taking with this company, Copa90. You're going to see a video. It's going to sort of speak to what we have been looking for, how we're trying to shine a light on these fans and the people that we're trying to bring into our family to do increased coverage this World Cup. I bumped into this guy because I've recognized his football badge. An Aussie, a Uruguayan, in the middle of New York. And now we're going into his house to check out what football means to him and his country. This is why I love this game. <laughs> No matter what colour you are, no matter what language you speak, no matter what shirt you're wearing, you're here for one thing and that is football. It's not so much about on the pitch, but more importantly, the cultural aspect, the way it can enrich a community, it can give the kids this. Get out of my face. Hello, Copa fam. Welcome to my city. New Delhi. Toronto, Ontario. Sydney, Australia. Kenya. Colombia. New York City. Welcome to Mexico, my friend. Every year, it's getting bigger and bigger. next to you, open the newspaper in front of you, turn that TV on. Can you feel it? This tournament is the greatest celebration of all the world's cultures. There is no competition, only the World Cup. I hope to see you all in 51 days on any one of our platforms across the Telemundo family, and I hope that uh, you got a little bit of a sneak peek in some of the coverage we're going to be doing. Uh, obviously, it is a huge responsibility and a huge task, and we're really pumped up to make this the most digital and social World Cup in its history. Thanks so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. That was so exciting. We're really pumped Good. up, so Thanks. thank you so Great. much. Thanks. Bye. Excellent.